Innovation ultimately is the, the implementation of a new idea or a new approach which makes a, a positive difference to the way that an organisation functions. My view is that there's big eye innovation, there's little eye innovation. Doing something differently is innovation and people shouldn't get too caught up in looking for the next big thing or trying to reinvent you know, the rocket ship or the spaceship. Little changes in government can make a big difference. IP Australia exists to help Australians protect their innovations. We created our own innovation program, uh, which is light bulbs, hence the light bulbs we have behind us. Um, and it was about coming up with ideas and having the staff on the floor really drive the changes that we need to see. It's part of the culture. I know it's a cliche to say it's part of our DNA, but I truly believe that. If we're not failing at least 10-20% of the time, we're not doing our job properly. So within an ST organisation that's, in theory, that's understood, in practice though, it is still difficult to move across here. And in time of reduced resources, any evidence of failure is still looked on, let's say, from the people working in that field on there saying, I haven't done well enough. In government, everything is so heavily set in the legislation. There's a real fear to move away from legislated terms and concepts because people are unsure of the, the risks that might be attached to that down the, the long path. I think probably one of the things is that there is a lot of bureaucracy in the public service. So how do you justify or how do you explain doing something new? The government's really good at doing variations on the theme or doing something a little bit different. But we wanted to do something totally different. I think that was the biggest hurdle that we had to overcome. We had a couple of small challenges in that we didn't have any money. Uh, we had no upfront investment. We had no resources. Um, we had no policy directional mandate. And we had no burning platform. We just had a really good idea. Our approach to risk is, is to acknowledge that risk sits absolutely centrally at everything that we do. We've established within the Innovation Exchange a culture of talking very openly and methodically through what the risks are. And in particular the risks of inaction and the opportunity cost that comes from not trialling, from not taking new ideas. And communicate, communicate, communicate both for the innovation, what the innovation is about, but equally importantly about what the need for it, what's the outcome of that innovation. I think what we do in, ta in the tax office quite often is that we um, position things as pilots. Pilots don't always have to succeed. Pilots are opportunities to learn, opportunities to fail, and just opportunities to try something new. Don't be afraid. Don't expect perfection. Sometimes just 80% is probably going to, be, it's going to be enough to actually unlock the value that you're really after. Even if there is an agency-wide strategy around innovation, it's really important for each work group to have their own way to be able to really engage with that program. Everything's going to be slightly different. A group of lawyers is going to look at innovation very differently to a group of contact centre staff who are speaking to a, um, the users every day. And so by being able to embrace all the differences that you have in the agency, you can bring together some really great strategies and, and share it across. I think you just have to sell it in the right way. I think the key bit of advice is about your workplaces and it's about the culture that's within them. Resilience is so important. I think that often we get hung up in government on looking for the next big thing. As we've been able to prove in the Fix It Squad, actually making small changes across government actually delivers big results for small business. I think what's really important are the relationships that you build, the ability to build trust with your stakeholders, and just the commitment to actually deliver on what you said you'd do. Don't start by trying to change the whole world, your whole department or your entire division. Um, don't try and change other teams. Look at your own team, what you do, what you have control of, and look at what you can change about the way you operate.
Don't expect that ICT is going to actually be the solution. ICT is the enabler and quite often we get caught up in waiting for a new system that's going to suddenly change the way we do everything. You can actually make 90% of the changes you need to make by changing the behaviours and the cultures and the processes around the ICT. Have a go. The urgent demands um, for the public sector to do better on innovation, regardless where you are, is not, is not receding. Everywhere you are going to need to be thinking about how innovation is affecting your workplace, your work practices and what you're setting yourself out to achieve and if you don't do that then effectively you're not, you're not providing the right sort of leadership to your work area. One of the hardest things that we've had to learn is how not to make rules. If something happens, we ask ourselves, do we need a rule? If we have a rule, is that detrimental to the community or does it support the community? What would happen if we didn't have a rule? What do we have to do instead? Do we have to educate? Do we have to lead by example? Um, it is really hard not to automatically reach for rules. I think if we achieve 100% success in everything we do, then we probably have not pushed the envelope as far as we should have. The, the amount of information, the pace of work, the expectations that citizens have about the APS means that we can no longer operate from top-down approaches and top-down strategies. We need to realise that the best ideas are the ones that are most likely to come up from the bottom of organisations, um, from our younger employees, and we need to give them the empowerment to bring these ideas and as managers not be threatened by them but indeed ourselves be emboldened by them and to, and to enjoy the championing of other people's ideas.